That's what I was going to entertain. <laughs> All right, roll call. I'm sorry, who did it? Mark. Mark. Okay. Castle and Gray is yeah. on it. At me. It's kind of furious. As uh, one of our uh, shareholders calls us, Eminem. Yes. Yeah. Secretary Gates? Yes. Councilwoman Foreman? Yes. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Harlan? Yes. Councilman Radical? Yes. Councilman Reba? Yes. Motion passes. All right. I don't think there's any, any motions coming out of the executive. As far as I know, maybe just some. Uh, Updates from uh, our council, Wilson Pipestone. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Just want to give you an update on two issues on uh, Terra and on the draft environmental impact statement. So, the first, the, the Terra place we are in that process is there's a new federal rule that's come out. We know that, and that the Minerals Council has resolved to engage the principal chief and the Congress in a discussion about this because this cannot be done uh, with just the Minerals Council or just the chief's office. Or if there are changes to the Terra, if ultimately we decide to do it, uh, if that involves minerals, we necessarily have to be involved in that process. So um, I understand that <coughs> your direction that the Minerals Council has not made any decisions about whether to enter into a Terra or not, but we are going to gather information through the appropriate processes, uh, and that that information will be first gathered through not only an evaluation of the law, but also by a consultation with the Bureau of Indian Affairs to find out the information that they have so we can get numbers in front of us and see whether or not you know, engaging in a Terra makes sense at all. Uh, so, as I mentioned to you before, uh, many times on the way to a Terra, there are off ramps for the Minnows Council or the nation to decide it doesn't make sense to do. But at this point, because of the condition of the regulatory environment that we're facing now, and our producers are facing now, that the Minerals Council has made the decision that it is in our interest to try to, to uh, consider a Terra to see if we can create a better regulatory environment for uh, minerals production on the Osage Reservation. So, um, I just want to be clear that any matter under the Osage Constitution, uh, minerals matters are specifically delegated to the Osage Minerals Council to decide what to do. Uh, we are delegated with authority to manage and administer the mineral state. So, it is not possible for the Congress and the Chiefs to go ahead without us on any minerals matter. My view is your counsel. Uh, the authority on minerals matters relies squarely and specifically with the Minerals Council. That is not a matter of 1906 Act, that's a matter of Osage constitutional law. It's not a statute, it's not a, it's not a uh, law created through our uh, legal process in the Osage Nation. It is constitutional uh, law. So that being said, again, we find ourselves in a situation with the American Bearing Beetle and the uh, environmental statutes that are involved with FOIA and all these different federal statutes that have choked off development in the Osage Reservation, our lifeblood of oil and gas development that the um, makes Terra something that we should explore, that this Minerals Council has decided it wants to explore. Principal Chief Standing Bear, Bear has very specifically said he thinks it's something we should explore, but it's something we're going to have to work on uh, with the Congress and the Chiefs to determine whether it's worth doing at all. Council. Any questions about the case? <clears throat> um, so we have shareholders who are concerned about the trust status. Yes. And whether <clears throat> a tariff would violate or break the trust. Can you give a definitive answer? Yes, that is, it would not uh, undermine or change the 1906 Act. So the 1906 Act, oh, the Osage, 1906 Osage Lockman Act, I know Councilman Reddy, yes, excuse me, in amendments, and the amendments to it. I mean, there's many amendments to it. You know, there's, there's many, many pages of federal law that relate that amend the 1906 Act. Um, you have that, it's now searchable in a way we have had until 
you know, from the assistance of my colleague Abby Fain, we don't, we hadn't had that at this point. But those amendments provide certain protections to not only the Osage tribe or Osage nation, but also head right holders to receive those funds. So the trust is not violated by entering into a tariff. Right. That trust, tr the trustee, trustor relationship with the minerals counts, the minerals state as the corpus of the trust relationship is not changed by a tariff. In fact, it specifically says that uh, it does not change the trust. Now, the one way that we have to be careful is that if the Minerals Council enters into an agreement and we cut a deal for 20, 15% instead of 20, a couple of years later go back and say, you know what, we should have negotiated for 20 because they're doing so well. We cannot sue the government for our mistakes. Okay. Now, we would not get very far anyway, I don't think, if you tried to do that. So I don't think we're losing any rights over that. It's a practical matter. So, but all those things should be fairly considered. And I think those are matters for this Minerals Council uh, to consider once we get the information about uh, what the decisions are. Right now, it's, as you you told me and directed me, it's too early to decide what to do about a tariff because we don't have all the information yet. So we are actively working to get that information about numbers that of federal funds that would come to uh, the nation and the Minerals Council about how to administer a tariff. We already approved leases, so if we decided to take over the leasing function as a uh, as a uh, uh, Osage Minerals Council matter, how specifically would that work? And so all those things are in evaluation, again, with off-ramps, and uh, but we're still in information and gathering mode and analysis. Councilman okay, so Marie, thank you, Chair. Uh, for clarification, when we say the word trust, uh, we're not talking about just the royalty distribution through the OST. There is just one trust, is that correct? Well, or, we have so multiple we, trusts. So I, I'll, I'll put it this way. There's an Osage trust system that's been in place since 1906, which has the mineral estate being in, within single ownership and that monies, the proceeds, proceeds from minerals production are paid into a tribal trust account. We colloquially call it C395 because that's really not the name of it anymore, but that's what we it used to be referred to, and we still call it that. But once monies are distributed to head right holders, it becomes a different trust relationship. Head right holders who are Osage or other Indians have a separate trust relationship with the United States based upon those accounts and their relationship after distribution. Now there's cases that say that a head right holder, say that person is dealing with bankruptcy, that a court cannot go get their money before distribution because that ownership interest does not accrue until the money is distributed to the individual, right? So that 1906 Act trust machinery that has been changed over time through any number of amendments to the 1906 Act, all of that is still in place. The Constitution does not change that. The question that we would be getting into here is as beneficiary of the trust, as determined by the Minerals Council, because we, the, the Osage Nation Constitution empowers the Minerals Council on minerals matters, uh, how as beneficiary will we handle our authorities as beneficiary? And will we take some of those checklists of things to do that the BIA is doing right now and decide we will carry out those checklists of things on our side? Okay, to clarify then, there's one trust that happened to be a, an account for collection of royalties paid directly to the OST account that you used to refer to as a 395 account, that in no way would ever be taken over by the nation. Correct. If we were to enter a tariff, that would still stay in place. If we did a tariff, there is no way that that would be altered or disrupted. Whatever mineral royalties come in will still be collected and distributed before, just as before the tariff. Yeah, I, don't, I it's not clear to me at all that the 1906 Act would even allow us 
without going back to Congress, and nobody's ever suggested we do that. The 1906 Act would allow the nation of the Minerals Council to take over the function of collecting money, investing money, and then distributing it to head headquarters. That is a function that's carried out by the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the OST. We heard from them today on that, how that works and how it didn't work very well in this instance, but they're scrambling to fix it. Um, but I don't think that the Terra, new Terra rules would address that part of the Osage trust system because I think that it's just under the 1906 Act and not to be changed. Thank you, you know, I think a common woman, Greg. Thank you. I know that um, you know we, we've been receiving calls and whether it's through Facebook or whatever or social media that there is a concern that uh, oh we heard this if we get <coughs> there they're going to take our head rights and give it to the nation and that is absolutely not true. Can you just reaffirm to the shareholders who are listening? and uh, for on the record sure. in response to that. Federal law prohibits the taking of someone's head right. Federal law, it's not a matter of Osage Nation law. If the chiefs and the Congress and the Minerals Council all said, okay, we're gonna take the head rights and reallocate them or something, or take one person's head right. Federal law, primarily the 1906 Act of Amendments, prohibits that. It's a federally protected right. And a head right is the right to receive proceeds from the Osage Mineral Estate. That's what it is. You have a right to receive those monies. When that it's in the tribal trust account, C395, once that money is invested and paid out every quarter, you have the right under federal law to receive that payment based on what your, you know, your percentage of head right interest is. So, um, thank you. I, is that, does that answer your Absolutely. question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, the Osage just can't, we can't mess with that if we wanted to. Now, I've never heard somebody actually propose that. I think there's a lot of rumors about that. Yeah. But I do think that um, Congress would have to do it, and nobody is even suggesting that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Wilson. I know your time is limited. Good. Is there anything else you need to finish? Uh, so just a quick update on the EIS. Okay. I appreciate the Minerals Council has uh, hired experts from ones to uh, help provide comments on the EIS. We've had an initial meeting with that team. We have allocated different assignments out, so we're all staying on track. And we did get an extension from the federal government uh, of about a month. So uh, that does provide some relief on getting all this work done because it's a very extensive document. So we are diligently working on that. And again, I want to thank the Minerals Council for getting the, the team on board for ones because uh, there's a lot to do and we're off and running. Do you feel confident in their capability? Yeah, so far, so good. Now, and all these consultants that they, that they work back and forth with, that'll be coming out of their budget. It won't be coming back to us to pay for these different consultants. That Wilson, they, do you need to mention that, that we did get the extension to February 21st? Yeah, so we did get a one month extension. We requested that, we, so we did get that extension. So that's good news. I've always thought that it was sort of, it would eventually happen, but I think this administration has been less willing to grant extensions only because they want NEPA process to not take so long. They're responding, but you know, we requested, we got an additional, additional time. Councilman, you asked about, um, what was your question? Well, <clears throat> we've agreed not for the ones to exceed $20,000. They thought they could do it for maybe less, uh, but they are calling upon other uh, outside sources to assist them. And will the fees for that come out of there? I believe so. I think it, now in good faith, they have started work. They had given me a draft contract. I've made comments on that, so we still need to finalize that. But I just want to make uh, to reassure them and this Minerals Council that the process, is my understanding, is that I, my law firm, would enter into a contract with them not to exceed twenty thousand dollars. That would be a I would invoice you for their work, and then you would pay me to pay them. Is that right? Yes. Or do you want to have an invoice? As long as we got, 
I think one contractor works good here in this instance. So just myself, that's fine with me, but I'm not, I don't know that that's- I the, believe that's the way that we, uh, we discussed it. We, we discussed and agreed to. That how we so yeah, it. exactly what okay. he said. So okay. that's not a- As long as we got here. multiple people billing us, that's confusing. I have one other question. <laughs> you think? Make it uh, uh, I know that uh, Fred Storr is preparing comments for the Producers Association. And if I remember right, uh, Paul Yates uh, said that he was going to try to obtain a copy of Fred's work, uh, which I think is fine for him to do. Uh, if he was going to incorporate some of the same subject matters, uh, I'm a little concerned about maybe plagiarism. Uh, I mean, I think it's great that he had reviewed it to see just maybe trigger some thoughts that he had thought of before, or the ones may not have thought of that Fred did. Uh, so are you concerned in any way about them sharing information with each other? Not at all. I'm not worried at all because we did have a meeting, including my colleague Abby Fain and uh, Mr. Yates did meet with Mr. Storr. I understand it was productive. I think that communication is healthy. So if there are issues that we agree on, we can sort of hash them out together. It'd be better if we agreed on all things. If we don't, that's okay too. But it'd be better if to work through things because you know how deliberation goes on something complicated. If there's somebody may say, I think this is the answer, then with some deliberation, they may change their minds. So it's like, I think you're right. It'd be better to have both submittals be, you know, you know as close as possible. So I don't think it's cut and paste of information, but I do think it is uh, coordination that makes sense. And we are doing it. And I agree. I, I have regular conversations with Fred over multiple things, and he said he had a, a really good, productive conversation. Good. So he's on board. Good. <laughs> All right. um, I think that's it for for our presentation. Abby, did I miss anything? That's, that's the fine. extension into February what twenty second was it? February twenty first. Uh, did you also have a? even another extension request beyond that day, or is that it? No, we, we requested that, and I would suggest that we presume that's the firm date. Okay. We could go asking for another one. I think we're okay on time. I mean, I think we're, okay. we're, we're ready enough to meet those deadlines and have sufficient comments. Um, but again, we're, you know, we've got, once has a good team. They've got a team of people. It's not just one person. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is what they do for a living. Yeah, they're, they're so, and they've got, ones with their people they work with that are inside and outside of ones on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's who was in our first meeting was all of those different people. So again, we sort of sorted out different tasks and then we'll regather every week to make sure that we're, you know, moving in the same direction for the same purpose. So that's kind of the status of that. Well, for the bigger picture, I know that when they came out with the EIS uh, and we had all these meetings up here in Pahuska and other places, <clears throat> They had so much opposition that it seemed like they went back to the drawing board, if I'm not mistaken, and that EIS that was presented several years ago was never implemented. So now we've got this new one. They've added 200 and some pages to the old one, and I, I don't know what all the uh, additions entail, and that's what Ones and Fred are both going through right now. But what's the next step once we go through the comment period. What happens after that in timeline? What actions? So <clears throat> we have another, another, a number of strategic decisions to make along the way as we prepare our comments. But once we submit our comments, the government, as a part of this notice and comment period, will have to take all the comments from everyone, which I will include Osage surface land or surface landowners who own land here in the Osage. Uh, it'll be us, producers, interest whoever, parties. interested party, whoever wants to comment. Right. They have to aggregate those comments and respond to each one, right? So there's a lot of work to do. Typically, an EIS takes a number of years to come down the road on this one. But um, uh, so there's a lot that goes into after we submit comments to kind of hash that out and then not only that, but influence the outcome. In the meantime, is our 1978 or 79 EA still in effect? Um, I don't believe so. We're not. No, they, they went to the programmatic EA uh, for leasing. 
and uh, uh, workovers. So that did away with the and individual APDs. So yeah, there's they're they're working around it, but no, the seventy nine they concluded wasn't you know effective. Yes. Thank you. Any more questions? Nope. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on in our agenda, I think uh, we had ones, and I think Wilson took care of that with the EIS. Uh, C is committee update recommendations. Councilwoman Margot Gray. Yeah. Um, I would like to. Uh, well. Chairman Waller, because he's not here, I guess he put my name on this. <laughs> so um, I think I, I would recommend we table it until our next committee meeting so he can circulate. Um, right, we don't have anything on our Yeah, there's nothing there, so I'm second not, that motion. Yeah, but we just table it till our next meeting and then circulate um, the recommendations. Any discussion? Can you tell us what the Senate is? It's committee update recommendations. All committees or just one? Year I think year? I, no. I think it's just all committees. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think that's 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 really his. So he probably needs to be here to discuss. One thing that uh, uh, Councilman Reddy and I participated in a Hork and Wealth Committee meeting uh, on Monday, and we we're talking about merging two of our committees. Uh, well, actually, the Orphan Well Committee chaired by Councilman Redcorn is nearing its end, but he's now initiating an EOR grant. Right. And he wants to probably put that in the form of a committee, and he'd like to merge the two, the Orphan Wealth and the EOR. Makes sense. And we were going to try to come up with a name for that and then present it to the full council. Okay. But since he's not here, he's ill. Uh, it was something that he did want to address today, so I'm just giving you a heads up. Okay, that I think maybe in our February meeting we'll be talking right. about that too. Yeah, and then I think, um, yeah. 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 Update. yeah, so I think it's just updating it. Okay, yeah. we got a motion on the any more, any more discussion? A couple of questions, Councilwoman Foreman, yes, Councilwoman Gray, yes, Councilwoman Harlan, yes, Councilman Red Eagle, yes, Councilman Rewire, yes. yes. Secretary Yates. Yes. Motion passes. All right. Meet, uh, next agenda is meeting minutes. Anyone uh, make a motion? To make a motion session? to approve the minutes. A second. Yeah. Councilman Harlan and Councilman Redigal. Any discussion? Any questions on the minutes? I have a question. Yes. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, Councilwoman Harlan uh, suggested that future minutes be condensed as a summary and not verbatim yes. a transcript. I haven't had a chance to read the minutes, but uh, I was just curious to know, did these particular minutes meet your satisfaction? Yes, they were much better. Thank and, you. And just if I could to, to tag on to that, uh, I'd like to formally thank the staff for getting the minutes to us in a timely manner and for uh, not trying to provide a transcript, but rather actual right. minutes, and, and I appreciate yes, that. Yes, thank you. And it's submitted with along with our agenda, so that was greatly appreciated. Thank you. All right. Uh, motion Please. on the floor. Call for the question. Councilwoman Gray? Yes. Councilwoman Harlan? Yes. Councilman Redigal? Yes. Councilman Rebar? Yes. Secretary Yates? Yes. Councilwoman Foreman? Yes. Motion passes. All right. All right. Uh, the only thing left is adjournment. Any? Second. Call for question. Councilman Harlan? Yes. Councilman Red Eagle? Yes. Councilman Rebar? Yes. Chair. Secretary Gates? Yes. Councilman Corbin? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Mm -hmm. A good meeting, man. Yeah, just for you. Thank you. He's, uh, are we all at our. He's got a little gap up, baby. Are we all? Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy blows, he hits it harder than that.